Welcome to the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative, or ITSI 201, for food service workers. My name is Carrie, and I'm a volunteer for the United States ITSI Reference Group, or USIRG. You learned the basics about ITSI in the 101 webinar. If you are completely new to ITSI, we suggest that you watch the 101 webinar first. This 201 webinar will teach the ITSI food and liquid testing methods. It is important to use both the ITSI framework with its detailed descriptions and these ITSI testing methods. The learning objectives for today are to become familiar with all of the ITSI testing methods, which allow you to successfully test any food or liquid in your facility and classify its ITSI level. We will also think about how foods behave and how to fix an item that does not meet the testing requirements. Most of the testing methods use common kitchen tools like forks and spoons. And at the end of the webinar, we will provide you with many ITSI resources. The ITSI framework and all of these testing methods are available on itsy.org. We suggest that you print out this framework to refer to it throughout this webinar. Let's review each level first. Regular, level seven, in black. Easy to chew, level seven, also in black. Soft and bite size, level six, in blue. Minced and moist, level five, in orange. Pureed and extremely thick, level four, in green. Liquidized and moderately thick, level three, in yellow. Mildly thick, level two, in pink. Slightly thick, level one, in gray. And thin, level zero, in white. Today, we will be discussing, discussing testing methods for all of these levels. Because everyone has a different definition of thick, soft, and small, ITSI provides a standardized way to measure these food and liquid descriptions objectively. ITSI uses objective, inexpensive, and reliable testing methods that can be used on all foods around the world. Testing methods are based on best available evidence. They are practical and portable for use across all cultures. They are reliable and also improve accuracy. Testing is to ensure the food texture or drink consistency at meals and snacks correlate with the recommendations of a qualified clinician and the doctor's orders. The first food characteristic that we will discuss is size. This is so important for patient safety to reduce the risk of choking. This is a photo of an x-ray swallow study where a chunk of bread is lodged in the voice box, which is at the top of the airway. A person will choke on bread if they cannot cough it out. ITSI measures bite sizes that will fall through the top of the airway rather than blocking it completely like this. Tools that are needed for food size assessments are a standard dinner fork and an adult thumbnail. It is also helpful to have a centimeter ruler. This test is used for soft and bite-sized level six to reduce choking risk and uses a thumbnail or a standard dinner fork. This test is also used for minced and moist level five to reduce the need for chewing. You can use the space between the dinner fork to measure. Next, we will cover these in detail. The soft and bite size level six food size restriction is 1.5 by 1.5 centimeters and is so important for patient safety. This is the size of a piece of food that could fall through the airway, but not block the airway, which causes choking. Imagine having a beef stew with potatoes and other vegetables. Now remove a small portion of the meat, potato and other vegetables for sample testing to check the size. Of course, it is not recommended to serve the testing sample. ITSI is an international organization and lists these sizes in millimeters and centimeters. 1.5 centimeters is roughly 0.5 to 0.6 inches 
but we strongly recommend staying with the centimeter measurements. If there are no rulers in the kitchen, you can also use the width of a standard dinner fork or your adult thumbnail, which is also one centimeters. That makes a great tool for the person with dysphagia to use at home. They can cut up foods to the size of their thumbnail to know that the food will be small enough to not completely block the upper airway and cause choking, also known as asphyxiation. The second method to test size is with the particle requirements for minced and moist level five. Adults typically chew food down to roughly four millimeters or less to make the food swallow ready. Some people cannot break foods down with chewing into small particles that are safer to swallow. A diet can be provided that is ground or minced to particle sizes of two millimeters for pediatrics and four millimeters for adults. A standard fork can be used to measure the four millimeter food particle size. Properly processed food fits between the tines of a fork. Food is three-dimensional. Particle sizes for minced and moist for adults should be four by four millimeters and no longer than 15 millimeters. And for pediatrics, two by two millimeters and no longer than eight millimeters. Most processed foods will be more uniform in all three dimensions. Keep in mind that when you increase the surface area on a piece of food, it will dry out faster. This diet must also have the moisture and cohesion to be considered minced and moist. That may require new recipes. Simply adding gravy to a plate of crumbly food is not safe. We are now moving to the topic of soft, as well as when a food is smooth and moist enough to easily swallow. ITSY's spoon tilt test is very important to make sure a food is not too dry and sticky. Some people with dysphagia have difficulty moving foods through their mouth, throat, and food tube or esophagus without getting food stuck or leaving residue after they swallowed. The tool used is a spoon. Scoop up the sample of extremely thick liquid or food, such as minced and moist or pureed, and evaluate how it slides off or does not slide off the spoon. In the photo, see the pureed peas sticking to the spoon. They become stickier when they are cooled down. Now notice in the picture on the right that the puree passed the spoon tilt test, leaving very little left on the spoon. Purees may be smoother when they are served warm. The spoon tilt test tests the sample for cohesiveness or the ability to hold together, but not stickiness. Spoonfuls must plop or slide off the spoon if the spoon is tilted or turned sideways with very little left on the spoon. A very gentle flick using only fingers and wrist and not the arm may be necessary to dislodge the sample from the spoon. The spoonful may spread or slump very slightly on a plate. Food and liquid should be moist and cohesive enough to hold its shape on the spoon, but it should not be too sticky. Let's review the spoon tilt test because it is so important. An individual with dysphagia may have difficulty controlling and shaping food into a ball in the mouth. They may lack saliva to make sure the ball of food is moist enough to swallow. Foods need to be slippery, moist, and cohesive. The spoon tilt test measures this for extremely thick and pureed level four and minced and moist level five. See the top line here of vanilla pudding. It slides off the spoon with very little leftover in the bowl of the spoon. The spoon tilt test gives us an objective way to determine if the food is too sticky, like the butterscotch pudding here at the bottom, a spoonful of food should be able to slide off easily when the spoon is tilted. You can give it just a gentle flick of the finger or wrist, but that amount of butterscotch pudding left over in the spoon here is a fail for the spoon tilt test. For minced and moist, a spoonful that is dry and crumbly may fall off the spoon, but it should be moist and cohesive enough 
to hold together in a mound on a spoon and slide off. Here is a video showing this for level four. You can see the effort they had to use at the end of this video. Now let's learn about the fork pressure test. The tools required are a fork. A spoon can be used, but it is not recommended. Evaluate the firmness of the food sample by observing the reaction of a sample to the pressure from your fork. Evaluate how hard you are pushing on the fork by if your thumbnail blanches white. As you can see in the picture below, you separate a sample of the food and press a fork into it. It turns out that approximately 17 kilopascals of pressure is needed to achieve this blanching of the thumbnail. And interestingly, that is similar to the amount of pressure used by the tongue to squash and strip foods out of the mouth when we swallow. The fork pressure test steps are listed here. First, use your thumb to press into the bowl of a fork. Press into a bite-sized piece of food until your thumbnail turns white. The sample squashes easily, breaks apart, changes shape, and does not return to its original shape when the fork is removed. You may see lasting fork marks in the sample, but the food does not stick to the fork. The fork pressure test is used for all of these levels but please note that the result is different for minced and moist level five. A minced and moist piece of food should be so tender that you don't need to use a lot of pressure when pushing down with the fork. Your thumbnail will not blanch white with the minced and moist level five texture, but for the soft and bite sized level six, you are using enough pressure on the fork to make the thumbnail blanch white. You also use enough pressure to make your thumbnail blanch white when testing easy to chew level seven and a transitional food sample. Let's take a look at a video that demonstrates the fork pressure test using cooked broccoli. This shows great examples of how a chopstick or fingers can also be used for the same type of pressure test. Now let's learn about the fork spoon separation test. The tools required are a, are a fork or spoon. This test evaluates if food is soft enough to be separated into smaller pieces. And it also defines if foods are soft enough for easy oral processing. This test is used for easy to chew level seven, 
and soft and bite size level six. For the fork spoon separation test, you must be able to break food apart easily with the side of a fork or spoon. Other tools are chopsticks and fingers. In many cultures, forks and spoons are not common. ITSE's framework and detailed definitions and testing methods documents include testing methods for use around the globe. Refer to documents for how to use chopsticks and or fingers. These tests are used for liquidized and moderately thick level three, pureed and extremely thick level four, minced and moist level five, soft and bite-sized level six, easy to chew level seven, and transitional foods. Here is an example of modifications for level three. As you can see, chopsticks cannot be used for this liquid texture, but finger testing is possible. The thick liquid or liquidized solid will slide smoothly through the finger and the thumb, leaving a coating. Here are testing modifications for chopsticks or fingers for minced and moist level five. For example, the finger test with adequately moist samples will leave the fingers wet. Now we will start to answer how thick is thick. We have been talking about foods and now we will shift to tests that mainly cover liquids. However, there will be some crossover on the fork drip test that will be covered after this flow test. The ITSE flow test is based on a method developed in food science to test the viscosity or thickness of liquids. Today, we will talk about the flow test as it relates to each ITSE liquid level. The tool for the ITSE flow test is the 10 ml syringe or the newer ITSE funnel shaped syringe. You will also need a stopwatch. You are evaluating how fast a liquid flows through the syringe in 10 seconds. The amount left over in the syringe after the 10 seconds will determine the ITSE liquid level. Now let's get into the details. A flow test is used to define ITSE's liquid or drink levels. The ITSE flow test was designed using tools that replicate the flow of liquids through the oral and pharyngeal cavities. See the diagram on the right to show the steps of the ITSE flow test. First, remove the plunger. Check that the syringe is in good condition. It should be clean, legible, and dry, and the nozzle should be clear and free. Hold the syringe as shown with one finger to cover the nozzle at the bottom. Pour liquid into the syringe. You can use another syringe to slowly and carefully fill your testing syringe to the 10 ml line. Use a stopwatch to watch for 10 seconds. Start timing right when you release the finger off the nozzle at the bottom. Let the liquid flow for 10 seconds. Stop the flow after 10 seconds and check what amount of liquid, if any, is left in the syringe. This will determine the ITSE level for the fluid. Look at the flow test card on the left for measurements of slightly thick, mildly thick, and moderately thick. Note that extremely thick liquid level four cannot be tested with the flow test. Now practice the ITSE flow test along with this video. Items needed to conduct an ITSE flow test include two 10 ml syringes or one funnel syringe and a timer.
ITSI flow testing is objective. Make sure you have the right syringe length. Not all syringes are the same. Measure from the 0 to 10 ml on the scale, which equals 61.5 millimeters in length. If you are still uncertain, ITSI compliant syringes will empty in approximately 7 seconds when filled with water. Let's review. Here we can see this test again with levels 1 through 3. A level 1 liquid was tested on the left, and after 10 seconds, there's about 2 ml remaining. That puts it into the L1 category. The thicker the liquid, the slower it will flow, and there will be more remaining with a higher ITSI liquid measurement. In the middle syringe, after 10 seconds flow, there's about 6 ml remaining, which is within the range of level 2. On the right, after 10 seconds flow test measurement is just over 9 ml, which is in the range for ITSI level 3. For a more in-depth learning experience, discuss these issues with your group. How do your pre-thickened liquids measure up with this flow test? Best practice is to test any newly purchased products, such as supplements and pre-thickened liquids. Do you know how thick the liquid medications are that your patients receive? How is viscosity affected by temperature? The answer is that liquids are thicker when cold and thinner when warm or hot. How and where should testing happen before serving? Also, look at the difference between cornstarch-based thickeners and xanthan gum thickeners. Which type keeps thickening over time? The answer is cornstarch-based. Cornstarch thickeners also thin out in response to saliva contaminating the cup as the amylase in the saliva starts to break down the starches. Facilities should closely review their thickeners for best practice. Now let's move on to the fork drip test. The fork drip test is used to check the correct thickness and cohesiveness in levels three through five foods and levels three through four liquids by making sure that a food or liquid sample holds together on top of the tines of a fork rather than flowing through a fork. The tool is a fork with tines that are four millimeters apart. This measurement is the standardized size of four tined dinner forks. Here is an illustration of the ITSI fork drip test for moderately thick level three. First, scoop or draw the fork through the sample to evaluate the flow. A small amount should remain on top with no mounding. The sample should drip slowly or in dollops or strands through the tines of a fork and not run through. The fork drip test is also used for extremely thick level four, which is a thickened liquid that does not flow, so it is not suitable for the ITSI flow test. Pureed level four feels and acts similar to extremely thick level four in the mouth. Therefore, you can also use this test on puree level four. They are both smooth with no particles, do not require chewing, and must be thick enough to set in a pile on a fork with minimal flowing through the fork. See the small tail below the fork in the photo above. Level four foods and drinks must also not be sticky. You already learned that the spoon tilt test, which is also a great way to test puree and extremely thick liquid level four. The fork drip test is another way to test minced and moist level five. We want to make sure that there is not too much liquid in the food. A mixed consistency with solids and liquids to handle in one bite may be too hard to control for someone with dysphagia. It is important for minced and moist to be moist and cohesive with sauce or gravy, helping the sample mound on a fork without crumbles falling off. However, the liquid should not be separating and dripping through the tines of a fork. 
you already learned about how the spoon tilt test is another way to make sure the food is cohesive and not crumbly and dry. Now let's review how many tests can be used within one level. This chart shows the appropriate testing methods for each consistency or level on the ITSI framework. This would be great as a printable reference for your facility. ITSI also has made this printable reference. You are now ready to benefit from this complex but comprehensive resource. It shows all texture levels and liquid consistencies, as well as testing methods with examples. This can be downloaded and printed from the ITSI website. ITSI has also created these audit tools for every level. They are great to test sample meal trays in the kitchen and at point of service. Go to the resources tab on ITSI.org site. You can see how these forms bring together many different testing methods on one checklist. Here is an example of the audit sheet for soft and bite-sized level six. These arrows are pointing to the critical testing characteristics for the different testing methods, such as food size requirements of 15 by 15 millimeters for adults and the fork pressure test that defines if the food is soft enough. Here is minced and moist level five. Arrows show the critical testing methods needed for a food item to pass at this level. The final example I will show is that of puree level four. A puree should be smooth with no lumps, pass a spoon tilt test, but not be so liquidy as to not pass a fork drip test. You don't want a puree to drip through the fork. It should mound above the dinner fork. See the bottom where it says that the sample should not be too firm to pick up with your fingers as that could pose a choking risk even with puree. We are nearing the end of our ITSI 201 training, but know that you may want to learn more about this exciting change for the people you serve who have dysphagia. Here are some additional resources you may want to explore on your own. You can visit the ITSI website, www.itsi.org, to find diet audit sheets, testing method documents, webinars, and other presentations, and additional U.S.-specific resources. The ITSI website is the best source for the most updated information, resources, and ideas for implementing ITSI in your settings. All the resources can be found in the Resources tab, and all ITSI resources are free to download and use. Please visit and explore the ITSI website to see what is available. You can also visit the ITSI YouTube channel for additional testing content. Finally, you can download the ITSI app to your smartphone or tablet, which has the full testing methods document and a testing videos tab with many of the training videos we saw here. The app is available for Android and iOS devices. It works anywhere without Wi-Fi or the use of data. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have further questions, please contact the U.S. ITSI Reference Group a group of dedicated volunteers at usa at itsy.org.